Let's open our Bible to the book of Judges, chapter 10, Judges, chapter 10. Tola and Jair. Tola and Jair. Judges 10, verses 1 to 5. Tola and Jair are judges of Israel. Verses 1 to 3. These verses provide a quick description of two judges of Israel. Tola served as judge for 23 years, yet no children are listed. Jair's description includes 30 sons. Verse 4. What we can see in this opening de description as with the account of Gideon is the struggle to establish a dynasty. Keep in mind that uh, there was not a prohibition against having many wives in the Old Testament and having many children was a sign of blessing. This is why the count of children is significant here. White and peaceable reigns for the best to live in, yield least variety of matter to be spoken of. Such were the days of Tola and Jair. They were humble, active, and useful men, rulers appointed of Yahweh. Judges 10 verses 6 to 9, the Philistines and Ammonites oppress Israel. Verse 6, often the book of Judges records that Yahweh grants the rest after the work, the work of the first Judges, as in Judges 3 verse 11 and 30, verse 4, Judges 5 verse 31 and 8 verse 28. With this regime following Abimelech, so there is no mention of rest for the people. Life goes on, but it is as if the people are constantly falling away from their faith. Instead of rest, there seems to be only more human activity. The fact that Yahweh keeps raising up judges to rescue and protect and lead his people is a sign of his grace. This verse and 13 verse 1 both point that to the fact that after these judges rule, Israel falls back into idolatry. This tells us that during their administration they kept the people from idolatry. Now the warning was fulfilled that the Israelites should have no power to stand before their enemies as in Leviticus 26 verses 17 and 37. By their evil ways and their evil doings they procured this to themselves. Judges 10 verses 10 to 18, Israel's repentance, verses 15 to 16. Yahweh has given fair warning that he will respond in time in Deuteronomy 32 verses 37 to 38. These frightening words, however, are used by Yahweh as a means to lead Israel to true repentance. They once again put away their false gods and serve Yahweh. Notice that the text does not say God is impressed and moved by the repentance of the people. In fact, it says that Yahweh's spirit cannot endure their ministry. This is a reminder that hope in the mercy of God does not rest in the sincerity of a person's repentance 
but in the intensity of Yahweh's compassion. Repentance, like faith, is never the ground of our salvations or pardon. Instead, that ground is the mercy of God. Even though he regards the faith with favor and would credit it as righteousness, Yahweh is able to multiply men's punish, punishment according to the numbers of their sins and idols. But there is hope when sinners cry to Him for help and lament, and they lament their ungodliness as well as their more open transgression. It is necessary in true repentance that uh, uh, there be a full conviction that those things cannot help us which we have set in competition with God. They acknowledged what they deserved yet prayed to God not to deal with them according to their deserts. We must submit to God's justice with a hope in His mercy. True repentance, true repentance is not only for sin, but from sin, which makes the process of brokenness essential to true repentance as the disobedience and misery of a child are a grief to a tender father, so the provocations of God's people are a grief to him. From him mercy never can be sought in vain. Let then the trembling sinner and the almost despairing backslider cease from debating about God's secret purposes or from expecting to find hope from former experiences. Let them in prayer, sacrifices and willfulness cast themselves on the mercy of Yahweh our Savior, seek deliverance from the powers of darkness, separate themselves from sin and from occasions of it through brokenness, humble themselves under his hands, earnestly and diligently seek his grace in prayers and fasting, and wait with Yahweh's time, and so they shall certainly rejoice in his mercy. Know this, and the Lord Yahweh will bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray for true and complete repentance. Father Yahweh, I confess that I have broken your laws, and my sins have separated me from you in the name of Yeshua. I am truly sorry, and now I want to learn away from my past sinful life toward you. In the name of Yeshua, please forgive me and help me avoid sinning again. In the name of Yeshua, glory away. I pray that you will avoid, you will, you will not remember. I pray that you will not remember the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. In the name of Yeshua, loving Father Yahweh, please think of me according to your mercy. And for your goodness sake, in the name of Yeshua, Yahweh Shaphat, I sincerely turn from all of those sins that I committed, in the name of Yeshua. I ask for your help in washing the memory and thoughts of them completely from my mind, in the name of Yeshua. Please, gracious Lord Yahweh, Restore me to faithful obedience to your word in the name of Yeshua. Fill me with your Holy Spirit anew so that I may keep your commands all the days of my life in the name of Yeshua. Glory to Yeshua. 
I invite you into my heart anew today in the name of Yeshua, my master and royal priest. I ask forgiveness for all my sins in the name of Yeshua. Yeshua, thank you for dying for my sins and for forgiving me of them through your shed blood for me on the cross in the name of Yeshua. Please take away from my heart all the sources of sin that defile me, especially proud, self, uh, uh, arrogance, and uh, uh, grudges, and uh, many others that uh, uh, I, I would not even realize in the name of Yeshua, Lord Yeshua, replace all these sources of sin with humility and the good things that you desire to grow in my life in the name of Yeshua. Lord, please wash away from our heart all the sinful crap and tendencies toward evil in the name of Yeshua. Then, loving Father, loving Savior, replace them with a hunger and thirst for your righteousness in the name of Yeshua. I need your help, Father Yahweh, in living this new life in Christ in the name of Yeshua. Please send your Holy Spirit afresh into my life to help me, heal me, lead me, and transform me in the name of Yeshua. I commit to make all efforts necessary to complete my repentance in the name of Yeshua. In prayers, sacrifices, and willfulness, I cast myself at the mercy seat of Yahweh in the name of Yeshua. In prayers, sacrifices, and willfulness, I seek deliverance from the powers of darkness in the name of Yeshua. In prayers, sacrifices, and willfulness, I separate myself from sin and from occasions of it through this is decisive, decisive and complete brokenness in the name of Yeshua. In prayers, sacrifices and willfulness, I humble myself under Yahweh's hand in the name of Yeshua. I earnestly and diligently seek Yahweh's grace in prayers and sacrifices in the name of Yeshua. And I will patiently wait Yahweh's time. And so I shall certainly rejoice in his mercy. In the name of Yeshua, thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Thank you, Father Yahweh, that you heard our prayers. Thank you, Lord, for your answers to our prayers. Lord, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you all the praise. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah.